Hello and welcome to this video. I am Karnesh Jauri and this video is about the make utility to build programs. When we develop a program, it starts with a small source file. The program grows as more functions are added. There might be multiple source files and there might be libraries. Every time software changes, a program needs to be built again, that is, it must be compiled again and linked to generate a new executable file. As this happens again and again, some automation for building the program is useful. At first, we might think of putting all the compilation and linking commands in a shell script. But that is a brute force method as a program may have multiple source files and all these files will be compiled again regardless whether a file has changed or not since the last build. A better way is to use the make utility. Make ensures that only the files that have changed since the last build are compiled. If a file has not changed since the last build, the corresponding object file generated earlier is used. This results in reduced time to build the program and the reduction of time is significant when the source files are large and many. And we start with the make command which can be as simple as typing make on the command line. For example, we have hello world.c file for printing hello world message. We can compile and build the executable file hello world with the commands gcc c hello world c and gcc hello world o minus o hello world. Rather than typing the commands every time, we can put the rules for building hello world in a make file which looks like this. And once we have the make file, we can give the command make and the executable file hello world is created with the compilation and linking commands. Before we move on, let's look at the make file. The name is make file with the first character M being either lowercase or uppercase. It is good to name it with uppercase M so that it stands out in the directory listings and inside the file there are rules to build targets. There are two targets here, hello world and hello world.o and looking at hello world target, it has two lines. The first line gives prerequisites for hello world. If hello world.o is newer than hello world, hello world is made. And how is it made? The recipe for making hello world is given in subsequent lines. Hello world is made with the command gcc hello world.o minus o hello world. Now, very important, all lines in recipe start with a tab character. You can't see it, but it is very much there. And if you do not start the command with a tab character, make will not work. Similarly, there is a target hello world.o. Hello world.o has a prerequisite hello world.c. And if the prerequisite hello world.c is newer than hello world.o, it has to be built. And the recipe has a single command gcc c hello world.c which again starts with a tab character as all lines in recipe should do. Now we look at a slightly more involved make file. For a moment, do not worry about the first two lines that is a line starting with dot phony and all. Then we have the familiar targets, prerequisites and recipes. And we can see three programs proc1, proc2 and proc3 as targets. So we can build these three programs using this make file. We can say make proc1 and proc1 is made and similarly we can make proc2 and proc3. So we have seen that we can build a target with a make target command. And if we just say make, make builds the first target in the make file. Suppose you wish to build all targets in the make file. So we define a target all with the names of all the targets 
as prerequisites. There's a small problem here. What if there's a file named all in the directory? It might interfere with the make processing. So we declare all as a phony target. That is, we are telling make for this target all, do not worry about the file named all. Just make this target. And make doesn't look for a file named all. It just makes the target all, which has the targets PROG1, PROG2 and PROG3 as prerequisites. Similarly, we have a phony target clean and when we say make clean, make executes the RM commands. Variables. You can have variables in a make file. Variables are defined as name colon equal to value. And after that, if you write dollar parenthesis name, the value is textually substituted. For example, we can define objects. Objects colon equal to foo.o, bar.o, etc.o. Then we can use the value of objects as app colon dollar parenthesis objects. That is, the target app has dollar objects as prerequisites and the recipe for making app is gcc dollar parenthesis objects minus o app. The value of dollar objects is substituted. So we get a short name for foo.o, bar.o and etc.o and we can use dollar objects anywhere in the make file after defining it. Till now we have specified the exact commands in recipes for building targets but it is not really necessary in many cases. There are implicit rules to build targets. For example, if you have make file with lines foo with prerequisites foo.o bar.o and the recipe command gcc $cflex $ldflex foo.o bar.o minus o foo in this make file there is no rule specified for making foo.o. If there is a foo.c file, make uses the gcc compiler. If there is a foo.cc, make uses the g++ compiler. And if there is foo.p, make uses the Pascal compiler and so on. Predefined variables. Implicit rules use certain predefined variables. And some of these variables are cc for compiling c program, default cc, cxx for compiling c++ programs, default is g++, cpp program for running the c preprocessor, default is $cc minus e, cflex, extra flex for c compiler, cxx flags, extra flex for c++ compiler, cpp flex, extra flex for c preprocessor, LD flex, extra flex for compiler for invoking the linker LD. LD lips, library flex for compiler to pass on to the linker. LD lips has space separated list of libraries. Load lips is an alternate to LD lips, deprecated but still supported. Coming back to implicit rules for compiling C programs, n.o is automatically made from n.c with a rule. $cc, $cpp flex, $c flex minus C. For C, n.o is automatically made from n.cc or n.cpp or n.uppercase C with a rule $cxx, $cpp flex, $cxx flex minus C. And there are rules for other languages and the source files are identified by the suffix like .c for C program, .cc or .cpp for C++ program, etc. Linking n is made automatically from n.o by the C compiler with a command $cc $ldflex n.o $loadlibs $ldlibs. Suppose we have x.c, y.c, z.c. And we have a line giving prerequisites for x, x colon y dot o, z dot o. Then these commands are executed using the implicit rules cc minus c, x dot c minus o, x dot o, cc minus c, y dot c minus o, y dot o, cc minus c, z dot c, 
minus o z dot o that is all the three source files are compiled and then cc x dot o y dot o z dot o minus o x all these commands are executed when we have a line x colon y dot o z dot o giving the prerequisites for x suppose you wish to write a general rule to compile any dot c file into a dot o object file we can do that using a pattern rule a pattern rule contains a single percentage character that matches any non empty string any other character matches itself so in a pattern you have a prefix percentage and a suffix both or either of prefix and suffix might be empty there is no overlap its prefix percentage suffix the text between prefix and suffix is called the stem so a pattern percentage dot c matches any file name ending with dot c and percentage dot o matches any file name ending with dot o so a line like percent dot o colon percent dot c tells about a rule to make an object file from a dot c file an important concept associated with pattern rules is automatic variables we cannot use the actual file names in pattern rules because pattern rules are generic and change for each invocation so we need some meta characters the scope of an automatic variable is only the recipe part of a rule it is not applicable in target name or prerequisite some of the automatic variables are dollar at the file name of the target of the rule dollar less than the name of the first prerequisite dollar question mark the name of all prerequisites newer than the target separated by spaces dollar caret the names of all prerequisites with the spaces between them dollar pipe the name of all order only prerequisites with the spaces between them dollar star the stem with which an implicit rule matches so now getting back to the rule for compiling any dot c file to corresponding dot o file we have percentage dot o colon percentage dot c that is a dot o file has corresponding dot c file as prerequisite and the recipe is dollar cc minus c dollar c flex dollar cpp flex dollar less than minus o dollar at dollar less than is the name of the first prerequisite dollar at is the file name of the target dollar less than and dollar at are automatic variables which are computed fresh for each rule we have a sample make file here there is a phony target clean for removing objects and executable files then we define ld libs as minus lm for the mathematics library and objects as the four object files and we have a pattern rule to compile dot c files to dot o files this pattern rule should suffice for the four dot c files and you can see each dot o has a corresponding dot h file as a prerequisite because we have defined a pattern rule for compiling dot c files there is no need to write a recipe for compilation of individual dot c files and proc 0 our target has four objects as prerequisites and we have the recipe for building the final executable file we can run the make utility it compiles and the program works we update the timestamp for a header file and run again it works as expected let's look at the make file once again suppose we delete the recipe for building proc 0 would it use the implicit command let's try it it works and you can see it uses the ld libs variable which is set to minus lm in the cc command for creating the final executable file and we come to the end of this video you can find all this information at https colon double slash bit dot ly slash make hyphen utility please subscribe to soft prayog click on the bell icon and enable notifications thanks very much for watching take care and stay safe